My computer, I already started recording this and my computer just shut up, shut off for no reason, so. <laughs> Anyways, hi friends, my name is Al or Lil Star Nerd. Welcome to my channel. Consider subscribing, consider liking this video, consider hanging out, checking out my other videos. Consider that. Before we get into it, I wanna thank my patrons. Your names are on screen. Thank you so much for supporting me. If you like what I do and if you wanna help me continue doing that, Patreon is really the best way to like directly support me. It's also super fun. We have a lot of fun over there and you get like goodies out of it. I've been having a really good time doing it and please check it out. Here is the, I think it's too late now, but I'll show you the March sticker and postcard and the original. There are a couple of different tier levels ranging from different prices. Um, you can even just do $1 for like a little tip jar here on YouTube. But even if you just wanna watch these videos, just like and subscribe, that is support enough and I appreciate all of you. Anyways, we're in a weird spot, obviously. We're on top of my desk today. That's because I'm doing some, you know, don't be alarmed. I'm doing some rearranging and there is simply nothing left in my room <laughs> that is like cute and functional for me to film in front of. This is kind of it. So this is what we get. We're sitting on top of my desk. I also, this also is not the video that I wanted to film today. I wanted to do an art video. I had, a, it was kind of easy. I've been pretty overwhelmed with work lately. And so I've been kind of needing to take things easy where I can. So we were going to do a chill, really chill sketchbook video, but I was very excited about it. And then I had some major flare up of my carpal tunnel. I have just been working nonstop between my own videos, the graphic novel, which is going really well, but obviously I'm doing a lot of work all the time. And then like there's the editing side of things and then just like everything, use your wrist. You know what I mean? Like my phone. And I reached a breaking point. I did some spray painting, bad idea. Uh, uh, and I've just been in pretty intense pain the past two or so days. So I'm taking some time off from using my wrist and I decided I would not be doing any art today, but that meant that I had to do something else. <laughs> so we're doing a talking video, very relaxed, very chill. Put this on in the background. I hope you do your own art if you're feeling up to it. If you're not, if you're feeling any pain anywhere, I hope you take a break, just hang out. Um, we're gonna just be doing like some pretty basic like advice slash Q and A type stuff. Answering some questions that I tend to avoid when I ask you guys for questions. I'll do my best to answer, just keep in mind all of this, if I do give any advice any about anything, this is just from my experience and my opinion, my limited experience. I'm not like a, I don't have any sort of education or training in anything, business, art, whatever. Um, so just keep that in mind. Take all of my opinion with a grain of salt. Now let's get into it. I've got these, this is so far away from me. I've got these sorted into a couple of like categories and I think I'm answering almost every question that you guys sent. Some of them are consolidated into other questions, but I'm gonna do my best. So we're gonna start with the stuff that I can go quickest through and that's like kind of personal questions. Updates on graphic novel. It's going really well. Um, he is really liking what I'm doing. We're a little over halfway through through final pages, which is really exciting. Have you come up with any ideas for a collection? No, and if I do, like I just, the second episode just came out. When I have any thoughts about it or any ideas, like I'll let you guys know. The whole process is gonna be documented. It's kind of like making the videos is kind of like me brainstorming, you know what I mean? Um, so it's part of the process. So you'll you'll be up to date. I haven't come up with anything specific yet. I have ideas for ideas, um, nothing that I feel is solid yet, but when I do, you guys will know. How did you get into sewing? Um, I've always been into it. I have a lot of family members who do stuff like that, crocheting, knitting, sewing, quilting, and so I grew up thinking it was cool. I was also in Girl Scouts, just kind of a skill that in my family it was like, of course you should know how to do this. Everyone knew like the basics. And then a couple of years ago, I got into Rachel Maxey videos and she would like make her own costumes. And I was like, I would like to do that. And then I didn't. <laughs> and then um, I, I don't know, I don't really know what, we got a, we eventually we got a new sewing machine. We had a sewing machine that was broken. Eventually we got a new one. And I was like, okay, now I can finally do it. I don't know, a lot of a lot of different little things, but I've always liked it. And now I have a reason to sew because I, I sew for my dolls. And so it's kind of more of a, a purposeful thing now. Is the income you make livable? Depends, depends on where you live here you know cost of living is just insane for everybody right now the economy is terrible so like no in this day and age uh, no, but theoretically if I had to I definitely could is there a reason you sell your stuff on Etsy rather than your own website there was now it's just a timing thing so before I just felt really intimidated by all the shipping and like all the that numbers and what are the ISSO numbers and everything and it, there's a lot customs and it's very intimidating very confusing and nothing is they never make anything easy um and I just didn't know how to deal with any of that Etsy made that super super easy and manageable and it was also just kind of like before you know people kind of crap on Etsy now but before it definitely was the standard so it was just easy to do Etsy and I just didn't want to deal with anything myself besides obviously like <laughs> do it fulfilling the orders so before it was just for convenience, 
Now, however, it's I have a website and I really wanna put it on my website. I just haven't had time. It's gonna be pretty time intensive. I have not had time to switch everything over to my website. When I'm done with my graphic novel, like that's gonna be the first thing that I do. I'm definitely ready for it to be on my own website. Now we're going to move into um, kind of talking about questions about my art career or advice that specifically comes from my experience in my art career. How does your current business compare to what you wanted when you started? I don't know. I didn't, I don't think I had anything in mind when I started. I mean, I had like fantasies, you know what I mean? About like, ah, oh, just being like so successful. I don't think I really, I don't think I knew that I was gonna do this. I was like, this is cool and I should pursue it, but I don't think I had any vision. I think it's what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? I think I've st stayed true to what I wanna do, which is focusing on art. And I think I've done that. I think my videos are still mostly about art. And yeah, I don't know. I'm doing everything everything that I think I, I think if I remember right, I think I'm doing everything that I think I wanted to do. Um, it's fun, it's cool. I, I don't, but I don't think I really had much many expectations because it was an accident, kind of. How did you gain confidence with your art? I grew up with a lot of a lot of people telling me that I was good. <laughs> I don't think I had many people criticizing my art. Um, I think that's why I'm actually so critical. People get on me all the time for being like overly critical of my art. I think it's because I I never really had anyone constructive criticism or, or negative feedback in any way, so like I had to do it. Um, but I think just I've been doing it for a long time. You know what I mean? And I've gotten a lot of good feedback and just things that are you know I don't think anyone I don't know. <laughs> I think I have had people who I really admire, um, other artists that I really admire say, like, tell me good things about my art. And I've just been doing it for a really long time, purposely trying to get better at skill. Um, and, and again, like people get mad at me for, for being hard on myself, but it's because I, I'm looking at it and I can point out the weaknesses and then actively work on them. And I think I can be a bit more objective about my own art. And I think just from that, from just, just so much time and um, practice. Yeah, I think I've been able to, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. I've just been doing it a long time and I've gained enough skill that I, I can objectively say like I'm good at it. And and once I know that I'm objectively good at it, the confidence kind of comes with that. And also I think caring less. I think caring less really helps with the confidence. If you put less stock into it, then it's like, well, who cares? And then it's a lot easier to, to just be happy with what you're doing. How did you manage school and an art account? How do you schedule your week? How do you balance school work art together? Okay, so how do I balance doing art? So I do it as my full-time job, which makes it very, very easy to, to balance it amongst, even then it's hard. Even now with the being my full-time job, I, I can find it hard to like fit time to do actual art. Back in college, I started posting online when I was in college, my sophomore year. And it started with, the only reason I was ever able to balance it back in school myself was because it was the only other thing that I was doing. I had, I was a full-time student and I was slacking in that. I had a part-time, I would classify it as a part-time job, as a volunteer position as an EMT. I was honestly, I started doing the bare minimum there. And so the only other thing, literally I didn't really socialize, I didn't do anything. The only other thing I had going on in my life was art and like my Instagram. And so it was like the only thing that I was enjoying. <laughs> and so that's the, probably the only reason I was actually able to balance it. I think balancing art, it's different for everybody depending on you know how much energy you have at the end of what you're doing. I know when I was, was in school, I doodled a lot during class. It didn't really, dis I don't think it distracted much because I, I would like, it would help me focus, but I would doodle a lot in class and then just cut those out and put them into my sketchbook. Now I would say like, if I were to go back, I would say I would like bring my sketchbook with me places. But I think like it is hard to juggle. Like, I don't know if I could do this as a job to the degree that I'm doing it now. And also like be a full-time student. Like back when I was a student doing other things, this was definitely a hobby. It was more focused on just like documenting my progress. I wasn't doing YouTube. I was only posting on, on Instagram and that was a lot easier to manage. Um, and then how do I schedule my week? I don't, just whatever needs to get done by a certain time gets done by that time. I use Notion and I just make sure that I stay on top of things. I don't have like specific days to do specific things. Okay, so how do I balance between what I wanna create, what my audience wants to see, separating fun art from business art? Does the thought that your art is your livelihood bog down your creative process, separate art your internet followers want from targeting random potential buyers? Do they mentally feel the same? Do you make a conscious separation in your head? Okay, so balance Balancing art for an audience versus me, personal business, viewers versus random buyers. I don't do, um, I, like there definitely is an undeniable influence that my social media has had on my art. Like it's undeniable. Definitely leaning more towards, like if you if you go back to like the beginning of my Instagram account, you'll see like the slow branch into one direction versus another. However, I will say it's nothing that I was against my will. It was like I was interested in multiple things. One thing was favored by, I, actually looking back, it wasn't even the thing that was favored. 
flavored probably. It was maybe the random things that would blow up. Like I enjoyed doing digital um, stuff for my characters and maybe, maybe some, I've never been huge on fandom art, um, on doing it. So, but like, you know, those things would like do well, but then like one cute sketchbook page would like do really well. And so I think I started focusing more on that, but it was also stuff that I really enjoyed. It wasn't anything that I was like being forced to do just because it did well on Instagram. And like, I don't know what you guys want to see. I've gotten the gist that like you guys mostly just kind of want to see whatever I do, like you're happy with whatever, which I'm super appreciative of. There are definitely some things that, that tank, but it's like, if I want to do it, I'm going to do it anyway. And you guys have to deal with it. If it tanks, it tanks. Like I just do what I want to do. And what I want to do tends to be stuff that you guys are also happy with. You know what I mean? I don't think I do any juggling or sacrificing in that sense, which I'm very lucky, but I think I kind of built my career off of that purposefully in the beginning. I didn't want to give into any algorithm and I, I set that boundary for myself early and I've kind of worked that into my own algorithm. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think I have a safety cushion there, whereas other people might not. Yeah, I don't, I really don't think I have that problem. Fun art from business art. Um, it's all kind of the same because I, the only time that there's a difference between like business art is like when I just don't feel like doing art, I'm not feeling inspired, but I have to make a video. So I did sit down and do a spread in my sketchbook for a video. And it's like, just, I'm only doing it for the video. But even then at the end of the day, I'm glad that I got something down on the page. I'm glad I filled a page in my sketchbook. I'm happy to have created, you know what I mean? So I don't think there's very, I don't think it's often that I'm like doing art that I really don't want to do. I'm um, just the thought that my art is my livelihood bogged down my process. Yeah, but no, I think I've just been doing it long enough that it's part of the pr part of the process and I don't think about it. Um, I can see it, it definitely was pressure in the beginning and it made it kind of hard to perform sometimes. But at the end of the day, I was doing it because I was, I, I liked art. I was choosing this path because I really like art and I was, I'm thrilled that this gets, I get to do this as my job. And every time I think about the fact that like, maybe this is like too much pressure or whatever. I think about like other things that I possibly be doing all those things would probably make me miserable in comparison. And then I, you know, that pressure goes away of like, you know what? I'm actually really lucky to have this be my job. And then separating between internet followers and possible potential buyers at a market. I'm not doing markets anymore, so that doesn't worry me. Um, I kind of see internet people as kind of like more of a safety net in terms of if I, if I paint something and I don't like it and I know I couldn't sell it at a market, right? Like this is not something that a random person would put on their wall. I know that you guys would probably be more likely to buy it just because it's from me. And so it's, you know, there's that aspect to it. It's more, it's more worth it to you. So there's that, but beyond that, it's, I've just kind of learned that like you guys are probably my, my audience anyways. I'm going to prioritize you rather than a random person. Also, I've kind of let go of the idea of making targeted art in general, because I would rather just make what I want to make and have that be successful. And that does sometimes mean tweaking, making what I want to make, but I'm still in that process of learning. So I can't speak much on that. Do you find yourself having a lapse in skill or enjoyment when learning a new medium? Yeah, obviously. Like every time I do something new, there's, I try to be easy on myself of like, it's not going to be good. And like, that's fine. Like that's just the process of learning. Super normal. Enjoyment. I really try to make myself enjoy the art process for the process and, and enjoy learning. So there are definitely times that I get really frustrated. Like I, when I just did the plein air, you know, that was a new skill and I wasn't very good at it. And I was getting real frustrated. <laughs> there was a definite lack of enjoyment, but also it was just a cool thing to go out and do. And so I try to remind myself, like I did enjoy it. Maybe not in every way, but I did ultimately enjoy it. But yeah, I think that's super normal and it definitely does tend to happen but I try to put a positive spin on it. Did your YouTube grow gradually or was there one thing that caused it to blow up? Definitely gradually. Um, I don't think, I, I didn't go viral or anything at any point. While making art in a sketchbook, quantity or quality? Quantity, IMO. <laughs> I definitely think like quality is also good. Like I'm not saying that like you shouldn't strive for quality, but I just think that like mileage is really important in art. And that's why like when I talked about, you know, I'm doing art on days that I don't really want to be doing art, but at the end of the day, I'm glad I did it because it's mileage. It's, it's quantity. It's still like getting practice in. Um, and I also think that having like a habit is important. And so you can't be good every day or every week or however often you're doing it. So I think quantity in terms of sketchbook and practice is, is more important. And I think with that comes quality. I think you can have both eventually. How long had you been making art when you decided to monetize it? And when did you feel good enough or at the right point to monetize it? Um, how do you know when you're ready to start your art shop or commissions? So I have been making art to some degree since I was like, since I was born, <laughs> I started taking like, you know, different kinds of like lessons when I was eight. I had started, I was doing art regularly all through middle and high school. I started purposely keeping a sketchbook and purposely trying to get better at the age of 18 to 19. So I, and it, it runs in my family. I do have a degree of like raw talent built in. So I've been doing this all my life. I've been working at, like, honestly, I've been working at getting better and learning literally since I was eight years old. It, it's definitely not an overnight thing, but in terms of doing it professionally, we're going to count that as like 19 years old when I started posting probably a couple of months before I monetize it in terms
terms of commissions, but those were super cheap. I'm talking like the most expensive thing was probably like 15 to 20 bucks. Actually, no, before that in high school, I did commissions, again, 20 bucks. I would do gray pencil portraits of people. I had like a little queue on Facebook going and I'm, it kind of depends on what you consider monetizing. Like just posting in general, I was posting with the intention of like just keeping myself accountable. That wasn't really with the intention of being like, I'm good enough to show you guys. When did I feel good enough that I could monetize it? I don't know, I think when, the thing is, is like I didn't go into this with the purpose of making it my job. And so I kind of did stuff when I got feedback from you guys that you wanted it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't make prints until I got people asking me to make prints. The only thing I kind of did with initiative was commissions. And that was just because I had already been doing them in high school. I knew that people liked what I did and that I could do it. I had experience with it. And if people wanted it, great. If they didn't, they didn't. I wouldn't be losing anything. That would be my recommendation. Do something that's super low, low risk like something like a commission where it's, you know, you're not buying any materials beforehand or print on demand type of stuff. And I think you'll know when you're ready. Like that's such a lame answer, but like, like look at yourself objectively, ask yourself like, who would want this? How much would they be willing to spend? Is that a realistic thing? Um, and then like, I, you'll know. I think you're in your gut, you'll know. And if you're really confused on it, you can do a little test run, ask friends, ask, you know, art friends, be open to like negative feedback. Like if someone's like, hey, I, I really don't think you're ready. Like be open to that thought. There's nothing wrong with that um but i think you'll you'll probably know like if you're sitting there and you're like man i really wish i could be selling stuff i wonder if i'm ready like you're ready if you're sitting there waiting to do it you're ready how do you not overachieve i can spend days on something that could have been done in hours because i just don't care that much <laughs> i get this question actually a lot and i'm always like you guys are you guys try too hard just stop trying that hard um i just get to a point where like for me it's literally just about impatience i don't like spending too long on something if i let too much time go between a project then i just quit because i just get bored like i will be working on something and i'll just be like i just don't be like doing it anymore. Like I'm just bored. And so that's when I'm done. And then maybe the next day I'll go back and be like, well, I missed some spots here and then I'll fix it. And then after that, it's like, it's done. And that's something very internal and personal. And if you don't have that voice and you're being like, hey, just stop, this is boring. I don't know what to tell you. It seems like I, I cannot relate to the experience that you're having, the overachiever thing. For me, it's just like, I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> and I, I truly feel sad for those of you who, who don't have that <laughs> it's great. I feel like I'm constantly being like letting myself slack off. How do you handle burnouts? It depends on the situation. Like right now I'm in a situation where I can't properly take a break. I'm on a deadline for this graphic novel. I have to get it done. I can't take a break just cause I, I mean, right now I'm taking like a break so I don't ruin my arms. But like, I can't just be like, can I take a week off? I'm bored. Um, So like I'm, I'm pushing through, you know what I mean? It's like, you, you just, there's something you just gotta do. But when it's on personal time and I'm just feeling in a place where it's like, I'm just like not inspired. I'm not really feeling art. Then I just take time off. You know, I get, I get to do a video like this instead where I just talk to you guys and that's not doing art. I think it's really important to, I have a couple of specific videos on this where I go more in depth. I encourage you to look for my art block and burnout videos um, because I'm obviously speed running this, but ultimately listen to yourself, ask yourself like really like what is what is the root of the problem here? Um, oftentimes it's just a lack of diversity in your life. Like you're, you're drawing too much and it's like you've run out of things to draw. So go look for other things in your life, do other things, take a break from art and creating. And sometimes it's just like a lot of stress going on and you just don't have the energy left over for this and you just need a break. And sometimes like you just need distance from the thing that you've been doing for like 10 years straight. You know what I mean? Like that's sometimes you need a break. Okay, now we're moving into specific specific art advice, bear with me. I'm so bad at this. If you don't know, I'm pretty much self-taught. I don't, I don't have a lot of like, I don't know a lot of technical terms. I don't know a lot. And so people will ask me like, whenever people ask me like, how do I get better? My answer is just practice. Like, I don't know. Cause that's just what I did. Like I, I told you I've been doing this for a really long time. And it was just like, I just consumed as much as I could, as much information and resources as I could. And I just drew as much as I could. And I wound up here. So I'm really bad at giving art advice. I'm going to try my best. I love to paint, but I suck at drawing and sketching. How can I still make something nice looking? Great, this is honestly a great question. You really enjoy doing it, but you're not good at it. How do I make something that I like? Practice with different styles, like experiment with different styles. I definitely had this issue where there was a lot of things that I liked creating, but I was never satisfied with what I was doing. It was just a matter of like, I was trying to do things that didn't come naturally to me. Like I was doing a lot of like anime because I liked it, but like I, I couldn't draw in that style. So I never liked what I was doing. You can also like fudge stuff or like emphasize things that you are good at. So for example, like you really like portraits, but you're not good at making 
it look realistic, but you're really good at like colors. So like ham up the colors, like go ham with colors, make that the focal point. Find specific things in, in your art that you do like and like focus on that. Try being a little bit looser, maybe lean into it a little bit. Um, I think drawing like a child and being really playful is a super important skill that when people are, are learning and practicing, like I, I tried really hard to be like the whole Picasso takes you a week to learn to draw whatever. And then it takes you a year to learn how to draw like a child. We, we definitely forget as we're learning and we're putting a lot of pressure on ourselves. We forget to have fun and be playful and childlike. And if you're in a, in a position where it's like, I'm not really liking what I'm doing because maybe it's not as polished as I want it to be, lean into that. That's a great skill that when you are polished, you're gonna wish you had. How do you render faces? Um, So that it's different depending on the medium. I have a Skillshare class, check it out. <laughs> It's all about faces. It also depends on like, is it quick? Is it from a photo? Is it from my imagination? Really difficult, very broad question, very vague. My advice is look at a lot of faces. Like this is, I'm so sorry, this is not what you wanted to hear. Look at a lot of faces. Look at how other people draw faces. What do you like about it? right? And then try to copy that and eventually you'll morph into your own thing. I like a lot of lines indicating things. Another thing, okay, focus on planes of the face, planes and shapes. Once I realized that like there are specific planes, like on the side of the nose, there's this little like trapezoidal shape. Like there's that that's always on the side of the nose that I love. Um, when you learn about like, like the muzzle and like, there's just so many cool planes in the face. I didn't go online and like look for like breakdowns of facial anatomy. I just like looked at a lot of faces. When you start noticing how faces are constructed, constructed anatomically, it becomes a lot easier. And then it's just a matter of figuring out how stylistically you wanna show that. That's the best I can tell you. <laughs> how to literally just keep doing art, stay motivated and consistent. It's really easy to make this homework. I get a lot of questions and I get a major sense from a lot of people on the internet doing art that they don't like it. Like this is such, and I'm not trying to be rude. This is a really interesting question because like there definitely have been times that it is just hard for me to stay consistent, stay motivated. But it's never been a question, except for when I'm in major burnout. In my regular practice, it's never been a question of like, will I keep doing art because I really like it and I really want to do it. So it's so interesting to me how many artists have this problem and I, I can't relate, like I don't really know what to tell you because I, and if you take a break from it, like that's fine. Like it's, I've had to do that where it's like, I, I've gone like a month or two without doing art because I just didn't want to do it. It's okay to take a break from it. You don't have to be doing something every day of your life. Like it, it's crazy. The only thing that we need to be doing every day of our life is peeing, pooping, sleeping and eating and breathing, right? You know what I mean? Like we don't, there's nothing in the world that we need to be doing every single day. You're allowed to take time off from it. I I, ha I would really recommend for people who have this problem to like really look at your relationship with art. Why do you like it in the first place? What's the goal here? I think hopefully for a lot of people, your art is rooted in genuine enjoyment and it's just like a great way to express yourself. Like I can't even tell you what I love so much about doing art. I can't tell you, it's just very important to me. And I couldn't tell you why or the definition of that, but like there's no question that I want to be doing it. And it's a, but it, like if one day I wake up and I'm like, I don't, that's fine, that's fine too. I could live without it. I'm not saying that you have to be like, breathe, sleep, eat art. But but I, yeah, I just don't know, like ask yourself, like, why are you doing it in the first place? And I think when you, when I think a lot of people worry so much about their practice, I've started focusing on like my relationship with art, like the base of it. And I think that's really helped me. Maybe it'll help you too. That was really unhelpful. I'm sorry. How to practice anatomy. Look at a lot of anatomy. Like just start drawing. Like that's, I get a lot of questions again. How do I get better at drawing this, this, this? Just keep drawing it. Just draw it over and over and over again. I never did, I did like anatomy studies. So like I will look at like figure studies, like figure drawings, um, figures of people draw them. And again, just watching people move and the way their muscles move. So like just studying people. And I don't mean like opening a book and like figuring out what muscles are called. That's great too. You can do that too. That's helpful. That's kind of how you're supposed to do it. But I think just like observing the world and drawing it a lot. And eventually you kind of figure out what things are supposed to look like, even if you don't know for sure. If you draw interiors or exterior landscapes or buildings, do you use anything to help with perspective besides just like a perspective grid? No, no. I sometimes don't even use a perspective grid. I wing it. This is not a strong suit for me, not something that I'm really good at. If you're looking at my art and you're like, wow, she's really good at that. I don't know why you're thinking that. I very rarely do it. I honest to God cannot help you here. I'm not even sure. I can't, I can only use like a one perspective grid. Like I can't do multiple perspectives yet. How to get better at coloring in line art. I can draw line art and I can paint color 
colors, but ask me to color in the line art and I fail. Relatable, this is relatable. So I don't know if you're talking traditional or digital. I had this problem majorly, specifically with digital art, but also early on in my traditional art. I learned that it's a matter of style. There's a couple of ways like you can like ex experiment with this and explore and figure out what works for you. And I think kind of both, whether it's traditional or digital, I think all of this will apply. I would recommend going art first. I used to do line art first and then I would do colors next and it never looked good. Try doing colors first. You'll notice that I still to this day, I do this now. I do my markers first and then I do my line art later. Starting with the colors is so helpful to me. Use colored line art. I would do like micron pen line art and I'd be like, or just like black ink on, on digital stuff. I'd be like, why does this like look so weird? It just looks like wrong. And it's because like the black just never like looked good to me. Once I realized like, oh, I can do colored line art. It looks so much more natural and so much more interesting and pretty and soft. And it felt much more me and the way I wanted to be making art. I've also seen people say, use like a, like do a sketch for your line art. Don't do like solid line art, but use a sketch and that'll make it feel much more natural. You can also do like, if you are like, no, but I like line art, then do the line art, do color line art, right? And then like tweak your line art, take some line art away. Like don't do solid lines. Maybe make it blend in some places, different colors, other places. Just, it's, I think it's a matter of style. I think it's really a matter of style, the order that you do things. It's not like that you can't do it. It's that you're just not doing it in a way that makes sense to your brain. Mess around with the order that you're doing things and the way you're doing your line art. But I think honestly, I think doing color first and line art second might crack the code. It did for me. How can I find more inspiration, more things to draw? I feel stuck and can't find anything new. I have been there. I had a lot of limitations for myself where I told myself the only thing I like is portraits. I don't want to draw anything else. But I did. I was just lazy. I just like had set this rule in my brain. The answer here is that you're going to have to do stuff you don't want to do. Make a list of all the things you don't like drawing. You're not good at drawing. You don't want to draw and start drawing them. There are so many things that I used to say like, I don't like doing. I didn't like to draw animals. I didn't like drawing birds. Guess what I love doing now? Because I made myself do it and I found out like, this is actually like really fun and I like the way it looks. So honestly, I would recommend, I think that this problem comes from giving ourselves limitations. So my challenge to you is literally make a list of all the things that you don't want to draw and start there. And I think once you open those doors of like, oh, I can really just do whatever I want, it's gonna be a lot easier to come up with things to do. Okay, social media specific questions. How to get started posting your art. I, like I said, I started my Instagram with the intention of holding myself accountable to continuously practicing and also to make art friends. If you're like, if you want to start posting your art, but you're not sure what to do, make it super cash, you know, just have fun with it. Don't put pressure on yourself. Don't even worry about like hashtags if you don't want to. Post when you have something to post. Don't make it a whole thing right off the bat. I think that makes it a lot less fun. How do you get the motivation to post consistently or post at all? Because it, for, this is also an interesting question that I get a lot because to me, this is like the objectively the easiest part of the job. But a lot of people I think have like a really weird relationship with Instagram and it makes it really hard for them to post. I personally, they have a, you can schedule content from the, the app now. I will draw something and I'll be like, okay, <laughs> let me post it. And, or now more, more recently because I'll post my stuff to Patreon first. So I'll just like open my sketchbook, find a page that I haven't posted yet. I'll take a picture. I have preset, you know, edit, uh, edits. I don't know what the word is. And then I schedule it. <laughs> for a specific time I post at 11 a.m. And then I forget about it. I don't do anything else with it. So it requires no motivation, <laughs> requires no motivation. I don't even really post consistently anymore. I try to post a couple times a week. I think I, I'm lucky to get one a week now just because I forget about it. Personally, I don't think it requires motivation. Um, maybe just make it part of your routine. All right, now we have question specific to shops, commissions, selling stuff. How do you start selling when you don't have a huge following? If you are someone who you don't wanna use social media or you don't have a following on social media, selling is definitely like harder online and I can't give you specific advice for that. I will say, I think it's gonna be important to focus more in your local area, like in real life galleries, markets, or focusing a lot more on like marketing. So like SEO research and optimization. That stuff doesn't make sense to me. Like I don't understand that stuff because I don't have to. And if you don't have that safety net, then I think it's important to to use those features, play a little into the algorithm. But I also understand that that's difficult for people. So I would recommend, um, yeah, like focusing on your local community. How should you start selling your art when you're young? I would recommend not doing anything major until you are an adult uh, because it usually will include social media. And I'm of the belief that minors should not have followings. 
that's just my opinion. So my advice to you is wait until you are older or have an adult help you and use something like Etsy where there is a third party and there's separation between you and your customers. Advice to start selling on the side, Etsy commissions, originals, or prints. So if you're doing something on the side, you don't want it to be too much work. I would recommend print on demand services so you're not having to spend a bunch of time doing it. And I would also recommend originals because that's things that you can kind of get to, to a two for one because you can make prints out of them without it being someone else's like, if it's a commission, you can't really make prints out of that. I mean, you can, but when I do commissions, it's like of someone's like dog, <laughs> no one else wants that. So I would recommend doing originals because you can make work that is fulfilling to yourself, make prints out of it, sell the original, sell the prints. So I would recommend things that are time savers, um, more efficient. Etsy is not bad, but you're probably having to package everything yourself. So I, I would recommend print on demand services or things that are small. So like just stickers that like you can just put in an envelope and sell um, that are like really, like that's easy. You know what I mean? Like not some big box that you have to like put together every time you have to mail an order. Tips for those wanting to start taking commissions or making prints. So I have two in-depth videos about how I make prints and my advice for commissions. I really recommend you go watch whichever one or both of those videos are relevant to you because I, I go very in-depth. I will say prints start cheaper, lower quality while you're figuring stuff out and price accordingly to that. I would recommend starting on Etsy just to get a feel for how things work or a website similar to Etsy, um, like Shopify. Like I know that there are other sites as well. For commissions, I would really look into protecting yourself in terms of like not getting scammed and you know, shipping policies, et cetera, et cetera, just because no one thinks about that when you're beginning. And I think that's really important. Um, I cover that in my video, but for both of those things, I would say start small, get a feel for it and work bigger. So start with smaller versions of commissions while you're getting comfortable with what you're able to do, like a four by five instead of like a giant 24, 26 by 30 canvas. And now finally, we're gonna talk about general business advice. Advice for recent grads to burn out to make any work and start their own business. Take a break, truly, truly take a break. I know grind culture is a thing. I get it, I like the grind, but take a break. Like school is hard, whether it's high school or college, it's hard. If you're burnt out, starting off on that foot is just not gonna be good for you. Take some time off. Like you don't need to immediately start your business. You really don't need to immediately start your business. How to get more confident with networking and reaching out to artists for advice. How to get more confident at it. Hmm. I would say go to local markets and meet people that look like, so you can see them in person and you can be like, oh my God, this person looks friendly. Approach them. Like I've had people come approach me, give me their business card, you know, talk to me about what they do. And I have never once been like, they suck. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, if someone looks friendly, like feel them out. You know what I mean? And, and as you do that, you'll realize people are actually super nice and artists love to support each other and it'll become a lot and a lot easier. I would also recommend joining local art centers or art community type things. Look into your Facebook groups, what, what kind of stuff is going on around you. Um, meet other artists who are probably in similar positions to you and you'll figure out like kind of what's going on in the local community, which will help you, you know, take those steps to like meet those higher up people. And it's all a chain. You gotta start somewhere the more you do it, the more confident you'll get. You'll realize it's actually really easy and everyone tends to be really friendly. How do you find jobs? So I haven't had a lot of like job searching um, because usually people approach me because I have this or I just like am doing this, you know what I mean? I will say, obviously I got the graphic novel job. That was found. There is a two local, three local art things that I know of. They're not immediately local to me, but they're within an hour of fine art centers, art alliances, art community organizations. And I, they all have websites and the websites have opportunity pages for artists. And I just look at those whenever I'm bored or I'm like looking for something. And I applied through there and I, I got the job. So that's how I've been finding jobs is there's also like, I don't know of them, but there are Instagram accounts that literally they just post um, art calls for artists, art opportunities. You can Google local calls for artists and you'll probably find like your page, like for your local area. There are national ones. There's like whole organizations dedicated to this. So just, it's a, a matter of doing the right Googling. Recommendations for artists who haven't edited a video before, but are interested in creating content. This is tough because I, when I read this question, I realized I've always had some sort of experience Experience. I used to love, I think it was called Movie Maker. It was like an old Windows software that like all computers came with. I used to like make little home videos, and like music video montages. I've always had an experience with an editing software. So to have no experience, like I, I don't, I can't even imagine. I would say start super small, start with reels, you know, find whatever software you have accessible to you 
and start really small, like start making reels, start making little clips, make video, like test videos to just get a feel for it. Also, if you're just interested in making content, like Instagram has like the editing feature within the app. iPhones, you can get like iMovie on your, on your phone. Start super, super small. It's again, it's just a matter of like practice. You'll get better with experience, but I would definitely recommend starting with some tests, um, make some content that you know is kind of just going to be bad that you're not really planning on doing anything with. And eventually you'll get there. Do you have any advice for networking and putting yourself out there as an artist, such as making business cards? What do you add on those business cards, starting a website, having a prominent style so people can remember you? Interesting. So this is also different for whether it's in person or online. Online, I would definitely say having a some sort of landing page, whether it be a website or whatever, but also like a landing social media page. Like even once I have my website solidly going to where like I actually use it, I would still probably point people to my Instagram first, just because it's a good way for them to like directly like follow you and you can follow them back and it's more of a connection and you can kind of see a little bit more like everything all at once. And it's also because it's a social media, um, it's a lot easier for people to like find you naturally. It is quite literally networking. In person, definitely having business cards available and just being comfortable like handing out those business cards to people. What should you put on your business card? I would definitely say your main social media handle, at least your main one, whatever thing that you, your name, what you do, your email, some way for them to contact you. Um, those would be the only like big things. And then to like make it memorable in terms of networking, like a cute piece of art, like something that is really definitively you. A website honestly is very, very useful. I think a website is a really important step. It's not the first step. You don't have to make a website right away. Social media will suffice for a while. Um, and if you're just kind of starting out networking, but a website is definitely much more professional. Um, if there is someone who like is really interested in you, like as a client or as a potential collaborator, it's probably better to have a website for them to stay up to date with you rather than like telling your a, a future possible employer like yeah just follow me on instagram like a website is better um having a prominent style so people can remember you don't do that on purpose like i'm gonna be honest like don't do that on purpose like just do the art that you want to make and just be passionate about it don't purposely be like okay i'm gonna use this color scheme just to make sure like it's great to have consistent branding but like don't do stuff to your art purposely to make yourself stand out do what you want to do make your art easy to see whatever you're doing as like your job like whatever art you're creating make Sure that's visible. I hate when like, oh, I'm an artist, like check me out on Instagram and then I go to their page and it's like I can't even see their art or all I see is reels of like their face and it's like, okay, I don't I don't know what you're doing and I'm not gonna read, I'm not gonna dig for it. So definitely make like your thing very visible, very clear to people. And yeah, be friendly. That's not great advice, but get again, get in contact with your local area, like get involved, join clubs, apply for things, get your name out there. Like I think that's a lot of it, is that you can't wait for people to come to you. Introduce yourself to people, go join clubs and organizations, whether it's online or not. Apply apply for different opportunities, be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. I wanna start an art business, but only locally, how do I start? So obviously I have not done that. I'm not the greatest person to ask. I would really recommend finding some local artists who do not use social media and like talking to them about it. Again, I would, I would really recommend there are plenty of artists in your local community who would love to talk to you. Definitely go check it out. But I will tell you what I what advice I do have. And that is before you get started on the business part, get started with just like the getting involved in the community. Figure out what's available to you. You know what I mean? Like you might live in a place where like there's not much available to you. You might live in a place where it's like there's this huge booming art community you never even knew about. Get involved, like I said, clubs, local organizations and fine art centers. Go to events, network, meet people. They'll let you, like literally I went to one market and at this one market, like so many people approach me with other opportunities, introduced me to other people, to ga like gallery owners and invited me to like rent a studio. Like so much happened at one market. So if you're willing to like network, meet those people, all those people are so friendly. They all want to support each other. You're going to find people who can connect you with others. And you might find out that like, you don't even have to do much to start your business. And that there might be like someone who owns a gallery that, that wants to host you and, and do stuff with you. So first step would definitely be just getting involved, figuring out the landscape. From there, I would say like, it's a matter, like once you have that experience and you find out what's available to you, figure out like, you want to like literally open a storefront or a gallery or do you want to be in galleries? What does a business locally mean to you? Like, do you want to just like have an online shop that you point people to? Like, what does that mean for you? Um, because it, the advice is definitely different on that. But I definitely think starting with just figuring out what's available, figuring out who's out there um, is the first step. Okay, that is all the questions. I, I tried to answer almost all of them that I could. Thank you so much for sending in a question. I hope that this was helpful. Sorry, it's an art video, but my wrists are very grateful for the break. That's that, I don't have anything else to say. I've been talking a long time, so I'm just going to end it. <laughs> Bye. See you next time.